Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today, after a series of monstrously hard puzzles, I am assured that today is slightly easier. We've got a puzzle called The Snake, for I hope obvious reasons, by Directionary. Um, and Directionary's appeared on the channel many times before, always with beautiful puzzles, sometimes with quite uh, unusual rule sets but not normally the most barbarically, brutally difficult things that we've ever seen in our lives. So I, I hope that'll be true today. I looked on Logic Masters Germany though, and this is three stars out of five for difficulty. So three stars is a slightly enigmatic rating. It can it can mean things are, are quite approachable. It can mean things are dastardly difficult still. Um, so we'll only discover this once we actually try and solve it ourselves. But yeah, it's a German whispers for those of you who are wondering what the big green line is. German whispers puzzle today. Um, so there'll be a few secrets that I'll need to share with you if you're new to German whispers uh, lines in variant Sudoku. Um, but before I read you the rules, what do I need to tell you about? Well, let me start with a quick birthday today. Happy birthday, Megan. You've turned 35, I believe, and I know this because your husband Adam wrote to us, um, basically telling us how thrilled he is that you found this uh, this new hobby post pandemic, and um, and well, we're thrilled too that you seem to enjoy it so much. So I hope that your day today is full of two things: Sudoku and chocolate cake. Um, now, the only other thing I need to mention is what's going on over on our Patreon, uh, our Patreon page at the moment. We have got stacks of extra content. There is Mark Solve of a recent cryptic crossword from the Times, a viciously difficult one. Uh, there is my Solve of Tall Cats, viciously difficult. Oh, must be in a different place today on the screen. Viciously difficult. A uh, puzzle called Shadow, which is a very uh, unusual mashup of Sudoku logic, skyscrapers logic, and cave logic. So, if you want, if you have a, a, a dose of Schadenfreude in your soul, you will like to watch that video because it melts my brain. Um, so, that's available over there. And the only other thing going on, of course, is the cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society. Um, which is our Sudoku hunt for December. And I've just been stunned by how many of you have managed to make your way through all of the all of the puzzles in that hunt. I think, well, there are, there are definitely over 15, getting on towards 20 different puzzles. And we've had, well, we've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of correct entries for all of the puzzles. Absolutely superb work. I've got more names to read out for you today. Uh, so very well done to Jackson Cup, Scott Lane, Tobias Binder, Penty Pulkinen, Vadim Elegin, or could be Elegin, um, Koyana Scotsy, Klaus Kolb, Chesik, Sean Leinert, Ilka Siki, Ian Denker, Michael Motzfeldt, Monty Coulomb, John Riley, Ole Magnus Buckholm, and Demetrius Danelicus. All of you sent in the correct entries or correct answers. Absolutely fantastic work. Well done. And I'll be reading out names for some days to come. You've still got four days to send in your solutions if you want to be eligible for the prize. Um, and now let's get on with the rules of the snake and see what directionary has got in store for us. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Successive digits along the green line must differ by at least five. So we've got German whispers today. So what does that mean? Well, let's imagine this cell was a two. If this cell is a two, then this has to be at least five different from two. So it could be seven, eight or nine. It couldn't be a low number because obviously we could be in minus three territory if we went downwards and that digit would have the same property. If on the other hand, this is a high digit, then this will be have to be five different from eight at least. So it would have to be one, two or three on both sides. And that's how the German whispers constraint works. Um, then we've got each marked diagonal in blue must contain the digits one to nine exactly once each, which is a long way of saying we just don't, we can't have a repeated digit on that diagonal and we can't have a repeated digit on that diagonal. And finally, it says the inequality sign points to the smaller of the two digits. So that digit's got to be lower than that digit. That's all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play, let's get cracking. And I suspect here, I will have to start with revealing immediately the secrets I know about German whispers lines. So the first secret 
I mean, secrets are things I only tell my favourite people. So I hope you realise that you're definitely one of my favourite people if I'm telling you my secrets. Now, could you ever put a five on a green line? Well, the answer to that is no, because if you try to, the next digit on the green line becomes problematic indeed. Because it's, if we go downwards, we get to zero or negative territory. And if we go upwards, we get to tens and elevens and twelves, which we can't put in Sudokus. So five is never going to be on the green line. So immediately we can say in row six, look, where does the five go in row six? It's got to be in this domino here. Um, and I'll tell you the other secret now. I'm just I'm just scanning around to see if I can do anything with fives. Um, I can actually I can do another thing with a five. I can get a digit. This is fantastic. Right, look at the diagonal here. Where's the five on that diagonal? It can't be in a cell that's got a green line on it. It can't be in those three cells because I know the five in row six is in this domino. And it can't be in those cells because they're green lines. The five goes in the corner where it doesn't get a song. Uh, that's five in the corner does not have a melodic ring to it. But we do get a whole digit. Um, oh, oh, no, I thought that was going to be exciting in box one. It's not quite the five could go here. Uh, Right, hang on. Let me just take a quick stare at this. I doubt it's going to be anything clever in these boxes. The snake seems to have shunned these boxes. And it, it, that does look like the head of the snake, actually. It's it's very much co more comfortable in boxes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. I can't see anything else with fives. Right, let's talk about oscillating polarity then, which is my other secret about German whispers. So, because you can't put five on a green line, what you'll find is that the digits oscillate. Adjacent digits are always either side of the five. And we can see that. Let's imagine this was a low digit. So one, two, three, or four, a digit below five. Well, what would this digit be? And what would this digit be? They'd have to be the other side of the five because we can never go downwards from a low digit. If we go downwards, we're into non-Sudoku territory. So we have to flip upwards and that's going to take us the other side of the five. Because even if we put one in here, we have to be at least five away from one. So we flip to the six at least, which is the other side of the five. So that means as we move along the line, we're, we're going to keep going low, high, low, high, low, high, or high, low, high, low, high, low, depending on which order we are in. So what we should probably do is to highlight the line. So highlight alternate cells along the line because either all of these cells I'm highlighting now, they're either all going to be high or they're all going to be low. I've just realized something about this puzzle, actually. They're either all going to be high or they're all going to be low. Now, the thing I've just thought of there as I was doing my highlighting is how on earth how on earth is the logic in the puzzle? Ignore this, this domino. How is the logic in the puzzle going to tell us whether orange is high or low? The, the logic in the rest of the puzzle. It's not going to tell us because, because there's nothing about the rest of the puzzle that determines the, the whether the high or the lowness of the digits. We could say we might be able to fi find out that, you know, this digit is, if it's a high digit, well, we might be able to say it's quantum within its, within its high or lowness. So we might be able to say it's sort of a four or a six digit or a one or a nine digit, but we're not going to know whether it's a one, two, three or four because nothing in the logic of the puzzle will tell us that. The only thing in this puzzle that determines the, the high or lowness of a number is this inequality sign. So this, I think, the challenge today is going to be, the challenge today is going to be to extend shading or numbering somehow down to this domino. Ah, right, 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 right. Look at this diagonal. That diagonal has four blue digits on it. So if we think about 
Imagine blue was a low digit with, with the low digits, then there are four low digits, one, two, three, and four. If blue was the high digits, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we know on this diagonal, as we've got all we've got all four blues. So the rest of the diagonal must be the five, which we've already got, and the rest of it must be orange. So those two squares turn orange. Now I've got four oranges in box. Oh, this is good. This is really cool. I've got four oranges in box five. I, d I know the five is down here. So this cell simply has to be blue. Um, that gets me three blues in row five. Oh, I've got four oranges in this row as well. Ah, right, that's nice. I've got four oranges in row three. That cell cannot be a five either, so that's blue. And that gives me four blues in this column. Now that means this cell can't be blue and can't be five, so that's orange. Oh, I love puzzles like this. They're, they're so weird, the way that the logic unfurls. Um, now... Ooh, so what we need, we know that those four digits there are either five or orange. But can we do something with that? So it's the same in row three. These three digits here in the, in the white cells, we know they're not orange. So they're either blue or they're five. We really need to know more about five, I think. Oh, the other diagonal. No, Ooh, we've got very, actually, we've got very, very little on the negative diagonal. Um, okay, we might have to start thinking about... We might have to start thinking about other restricted digits, because there's a sort of semi-secret about German Whispers lines, which follows from the logic we've already talked about. And that relates to the four and the six. So if you think about trying to put a, like, could this cell, for example, could that be a four? Well, no is the answer, because although you can put four and six on green lines, they only have one Sudoku partner. They're very monogamous. Um, and basically four can only be with the Sudoku digit nine because we need a digit that's five away from four. There is only one Sudoku digit that meets that criteria. So if this was a four, you'd have to double nine those cells and break the puzzle because Sudoku wouldn't be obeyed. There'd be two nines in box one. So four and six are going to be digits that are probably difficult to place like that can't be a four or a six the problem is that one can be that could be a four and then you could double nine those cells the other decision we're going to have to make actually and in fact i know what i'm going to do here if this does turn out this way um but i do wonder whether those watching who are trying the puzzle will do the same thing but if you imagine trying to solve this if we worked out that that digit, for example, was a four or a six, one thing we could do is just guess. Just assume it's a four, fill in the puzzle, and then at some point you'll get down to this inequality sign, and either it will work or it won't. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, then you just take 10 minus all the digits that you've put in, and change all of the digits to be 10 minus whatever you've got in them and, and then the puzzle will work because the inequality sign will reverse. So that is one way you could do this. Now, when I thought about doing that in the past, I have been, I think, hauled over the coals for what people call bifurcation. But I'm, I'm not sure I agree that that's bifurcation. It's placeholding, which is a slightly different thing. It's, it's, it's still extracting all the logic that we're going to be finding along the snake to do that, but I appreciate people won't like it or they'll accuse me of doing something I shouldn't, so I, I won't do it. But I, I wonder I wonder if that will be the preferred method from the audience. Um, anyway, I'm not doing a very good job here, am I? That can't be a four or a six. Let's try, let's try this one. We've got, we should try the rows and columns where we have four definite digits of the same size. So that can't be four or six either, actually. 
that can be I would put two nines or two ones into those cells and that can be bobbins 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 right that didn't work let's try let's try oranges in this row so that one can't be four or six that one can't be four or six ah right oranges in row six which one can be the well the what's the right expression for a four or six the least extreme digit which one can be the least extreme orange well not that one because that's going to put extreme blue into those two squares if that's least extreme orange those are both extreme blue if that's least extreme orange those can be the same digit so that's fine but if that's least extreme orange those two cells are in the same box so that is least extreme orange um, which means those two squares are most extreme blue <laughs> And that's actually useful going back to this row, isn't it? Because didn't I say that could be extreme orange? And it could have been until just now, because it now sees extreme or least extreme orange. So least extreme orange in this row is now there, which means these two cells are most extreme blue, which is rather nice. Now most extreme blue in 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 box three is now there by Sudoku of all things. Most extreme blue can't live in the corner by Sudoku. So most extreme blue is in one of those two cells. Bar humbug, I don't think. I, no, I think we're running out of legs here. Let me think about this. Can I get most, ex oh no, I can. I can get most extreme blue in um, box two by Sudoku because that these digits by the way although these are labeled with ones and nines you might be thinking well what if obviously these are all the same number hopefully that's very clear because they're if blue is low these are all the digit one if if blue is high these are all the digit nine so it is totally legitimate to do sudoku using um using the fact that these are most extreme blue but you can see like if we knew that if we if we just guessed that orange was four then we would know that all of these cells were nines and we would, we could carry on with the puzzle on that basis. Um, and it might make doing the Sudoku easier, at least for people like me. Um, now, so I've got, I've actually got six. I've got six. Oh, hang on. Here's a, oh, here's a good question. Where does most extreme blue go on the positive diagonal? It's not there. Well, these, these two are the interesting ones because that's locking um, all those six cells from being most extreme blue. So one of those is most extreme blue and it's not those two. So that's most extreme blue, which is great because now most extreme blue in this column can't be in the corner, can't be here by Sudoku. So that's most extreme blue. And now most extreme blue in the middle box goes here. So we've got we've got all our most extreme blues straight away. And we know a little bit about least extreme orange, which, oh no, not quite. Um, hmm. Can we do any better than this? We've got to... Oh, hang on. I'm going to change tag. I'm going to look at least extreme blue. Where is least extreme blue in that foursome? Well, it's not there because that will make both of those most extreme orange. <laughs> it's not there. Those can't be the same digit. So it's there. So that is least extreme blue. That can't. Right. Here's a little point. That can't be. Um, least extreme blue because that will put most extreme orange in those two cells so this digit is in one of those two positions oh, which gives us a virtual 4-6 pair in box 6 and column 7 in the sense that two of those three digits have to be 4 and 6 now what are, the, what are these white squares? these are these are blue of some kind ah no better than that it's actually least extreme blue look at this row and ask where 
least extreme blue can go, i.e. the 4 or a 6 that's blue. If that's least extreme blue, those two have to be the same digit, 1 or 9, that's not going to work. Same thing is here, those two would be the same. So the blue least extreme digit is in this domino along with a 5, so that is a 4, whoopsie. Ah, that is the digits 4, 5, right, we've got a 4, 5, 6 triple here. We know there's a 5 in here. And we know that this has got the blue digit in it, the blue four six. So these digits are, are two eight and three seven. <laughs> oh well, that's no, that's fine. So that's for that's got to be uh, the least extreme blue digit as well, which is potentially interesting. So that means those two squares are the most extreme orange digits. And that means by Sudoku, that's the most extreme orange digit. Um, we can now say that... So now, or, right, now, now where is orange least extreme digit in box three? It's got to be there, I think, which gives us another orange digit, therefore. So that's got to be the last blue digit in this box. These digits are... 2, 8, and 3, 7 in some order of bluenesses. 5 is in one of... Ah, here's something, look. 5 by Sudoku is in one of those two cells in box 2. Maybe I should give 5 its own special colour. Let's give 5 a special colour. The special colour of either greenliness... Oh, no, I don't, don't think I want that green. Purpliness, right. So 5 can be purple. So five is in one of those, five is in one of these, but I don't think that's the interesting thing. The interesting thing I was thinking is, look, in this row, I've got four blues and a five now. So that little cell is orange. But we don't know its nature, unfortunately. At least I don't think we do. Um, Okie dokie. Can we do some more Sudoku? We can. I don't know. The. Oh, I see. Right. Well, here's a small point. Whatever this digit is, in box five, where does it go? And the answer is not here by Sudoku, and not there, because if it's there. It has to be surrounded by the same digit on both sides because of the snake. So it's in one of those two cells, which, oh, which does absolutely diddly squat. That's the most useless deduction in Christendom. Um, okay, so what else should we do here? We've got right. We've got a one nine pair and a four six pair in row three. So those two digits either. They're either a 2-3 pair or they're a 7-8 pair, depending on whether orange is high or low. 2-3 or... Right, here's something then. Okay, so this is either a 2-3 pair or a 7-8 pair. We don't know which. But we do now know the nature of this blue cell. Because if that blue cell was 3-7, for example, let's imagine that this was a 7-8 pair. If this is a 7-8 pair, this is going to be a 3 now. But that, the 3 and the 7 are too close to each other. They're only 4 apart. And uh, that's not going to work. So because one of these has to be relatively close to the middle, this has to be as extreme as it can be without being the most extreme blue. So that's got to be 2 or 8, which means that's got to be 3 or 7. which is very useful for the following reason. Come on, brain, think of a reason. <laughs> Come on, brain. Ah, my mouth wrote checks my brain couldn't cash. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ah, no, hang on. Look, that's, that's now a three or a seven by the power of blueness in this column. So what's the... Oh, that, that's fine. This digit can't be the least extreme blue because it, it will then be surrounded by two of the same digits. So that's got to be a two or an eight. This is least extreme blue, isn't it? So 
Oh yeah, and down the bottom of this column we've got two oranges now, so that's quite helpful. No, that can't be right. Two blues, I meant to say. I was counting. <laughs> I saw orange, said orange, meant blue. Um, right, so those two squares are 3, 7 and 4, 6, which is very unhelpful indeed, because I don't think I can resolve that. The only way of resolving that from what we've got at the moment is if I know that digit, which is not 2, 8 or 1, 9. Ah, OK, that is 4, 6, isn't it? Because that can't be 4, 6, because again, that will put most extreme orange into two cells. So right, so that's 4, 6. This is 3, 7. Therefore, that's 4, 6. This is 3, 7. That's a 3, 7 in the corner, potential for a song. Um, I've got... I still haven't got anything on my special, special domino. I can do the following trick next, he says, again, <laughs> trying desperately to see anything. Oh, well, okay, that's got to be a one or a nine, hasn't it? Because that's next to least extreme blue. So if that's a one or a nine, one of these three cells is one or nine. Do we know which one? Apparently not. Um, can we learn which one? Maybe. Well, a small point is I've not put one nine on this diagonal yet, and we can't put it there, look. So it's either there or there, which is potentially interesting. If I can, hmm, is there some way I can reduce the options there? Maybe not, but may ah, here's a point. Look, this is a three seven that can never go next to itself along the snake. If that's three seven and that's three seven, then what we're saying is this is going to be a three seven pair at the end of the puzzle, and three and seven are not five apart. That is a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. So that's got to not be three seven. So that's got to be three seven. Okay, so now these squares are 1, 9 and 3, 7, which, well, I can do something with that. It's complicated, but I can do something with that. So if we think about, we know that there's a 1 or a 9, an orange 1, 9 in one of those two cells. And I know that in box 5, the orange 1, 9 is either here or here. So if we look at row five now and ask where the orange one nine goes, you can see it can't be in any of these cells. So it's in this box somewhere. And yet there's an orange one nine, orange one nine there. So that is an orange one nine out of absolutely nowhere. Now that, oh, I was going to say that can't be an orange four six, which is totally obvious by the power of Sudoku as well as the power of um, the green line. So this is two eight or three seven. Um, oh dear, this is this is where this could get very tricky indeed. If this is going to be very challenging in terms of you know working out working out how to how to do the Sudoku parts of this, that's not going to play to my strengths, is it? So hang on, right? This is this is two seven and three eight, but I don't know the order. Bobbins. What could it be then? Um, could it be? Could it be? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's a two or an eight. Is that some? I don't think that's restricting it enough. Um, oh, yeah. No, hang on. That's got to be a one nine. Just to, so I focused on this and used it to do this, but of course the corollary of that, imagine this was a three, that's going to make this an eight, but that's got to be a one or a nine. So that means this cell is a three or a seven, which means, oh, it doesn't do anything. Oh, but one nine on that diagonal look is now forced. It's got to be here, which means this square's become two or eight. 
Oh, come on. If that's two or eight, it doesn't tell me anything about these. It's not a very extreme digit. Well, it is an extreme digit, but that doesn't make it sort of useful from a German whispers perspective. Um, what do we say? We know the four or six is in one of those squares. It's two or eight in one of those three positions. I don't know how to do it. No. Is it going to be? Have I put, oh, I tell you what I haven't done. I've not put one nine, orange one nine on that diagonal. Where does it go? It's got to go there. It's the only place it can live. And that's lovely. So that's an orange one nine at the bottom of the grid. Well, near, we're starting to get a little bit more pressure on the inequality sign. Can we? Well, what do we do now? We know that. Which diagonal do we think is the most constrained? Well, here's the point, actually. On this diagonal, those two squares are a 2, 8 and a 4, 6. So that square is a 3 or a 7. And given that it's next to a 1 or a 9, that cell we know is a 2 or an 8. Because the 3, imagine again, I keep doing this. Imagine that's a 3. It's going to be next to an 8 and a 9. So we can immediately, if it's a, um, if it's a, <laughs> if it's a, ah, <laughs> what, am, what am I talking about? If it's a 3, it's got to be next to an 8 or a 9. If it's a 7, it's got to be next to a 1 or a 2 because it needs digits that are, are, are so far away from it. So if that's a 2 or an 8 now, and that was the blue four six, and that is a blue three seven, which we could actually have also have seen from this column. So now there's a blue three seven down here. Oh, and a blue two eight. Look at that. That's a blue. I, I will pencil mark that. That's a two eight and a three seven in some order. So the blue four six is what we need to get somehow, some way. But we don't have a way of getting it. Oh no. Ah, that digit's orange because it sees the five and it sees four blues. So that's orange, but we literally, I mean, we know it's not one nine. That's as much as we know. So we need, we might need to know more about fives. Oh, look, yeah, okay. Five in this column is now down here somewhere. So is there a way? No, I was wondering if I could get four blues or four oranges in a row or column that that also saw these fives, but no, apparently not. So, so these squares here are two, eight and four, six. And what could we say about the world now? Can we say anything useful? I've still got my four blues here. Could we get, oh, two, eight is nearly restricted in that box. 28 is nearly or two, oh, 37 is a little bit restricted down here. It's got to be in a domino, but I don't think that's helpful or not helpful enough. No, okay, so I'm now getting properly stuck. Have we, and if you stare at the whispers line, we have actually used it a little bit as well. So we haven't done a dreadful job. We don't quite know what's going. We haven't got this down to pairs yet. But everything else we have down to just uh, a single option. So the challenge now is going to be: Have we got all? Have I got all the ones and nines? I think I have. Yeah, I've got ones and nines in every box. So we've got to stop looking at those. I would have thought four and six is going to be the next restricted digit. So four and six of which color though? Do we think blue or do we think? orange. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I have not. Well, I do actually that one, that cell I haven't filled in. I've just realized and that's on the line and that definitely can't be a four or a six. In fact, look, it's next to a three or a seven. So that's got to be a two or an eight. That's a free win. Does that help me? I don't believe it. I don't think it does. I thought that was going to be huge. And I know now one of these two cells is a 2-8, but I don't think I know which one. What about fours and sixes then? Can we 
We know there's a four or six in one of these two cells. What about that digit then? That apparently is blue and that's two. Okay, it's next to three seven. So it can't, and it can't be blue one nine. So that is blue two eight. There's another tiny deduction. So blue two eight is in one of those two squares. But I don't know which one it's in again. Oh, this is getting challenging. You rotten thing. What about then three? So these are from three, seven and five. One of them is blue three, seven. Not that one. OK, that, that's really hard. My goodness, this three, seven in the corner sees that cell, which can't be blue three, seven. So that's blue three, seven over here. Uh, let's put that in. It gives us a five, actually. That might be the big the big win, because if we can get this five to see anything. Oh, it does. Look, the five sees that cell. Wow. OK, so I get five in the middle box. I get this digit now is not five. So that's the blue four or six. That's great. Right now, look, that is blue four or six by our old friend Sudoku. A friend who is a fair weather friend, at least. Two eight. That's blue two eight now. <laughs> um, so blue. Oh no! Come on. Blue two eight is down here somewhere. And blue. Oh, blue two eight is there. That's massive. Okay. Because that means the rest of this box is either filled with oranges or fives. Right. So that digit can't be five. So it must be orange. And we don't know its nature. Well, we nearly know its nature. We know it's four, six or three, seven. That's quite interesting. I'm going to definitely pencil mark that. Um, we haven't put we haven't put blue three, seven into this column and it can only live at the top. So that's blue three, seven. That one, ah, where is, where is orange four, six, orange least extreme? It's, it's in the center of the grid of all places. Perhaps a surprise. So that cell is now not four, six. So this is a two, eight, which might be, ah, five, five is there now by the power of five, five, fiveness. Let's give that its perplification. Um, so this square is now two or eight orange. So this square is now three or seven orange. That square is three or seven orange. Come on, come on. Have we, have we done this? Have we got it there now? Maybe not quite. Um, we know that that square is either four, six. Oh no, it's still resisting. I know. Well, I know that's orange. So let's put that in. In case. So this, these two squares are from three, seven, and four, six. So two, eight is over here and is in the corner actually by Sudoku. So those two squares have to be blue, and we know that they are two, eight, and four, six. But we, I don't think we know the order somehow. Oh, what's going on on this diagonal now? I've got everything in it apart from that cell's got to be three seven of all things. Which, oh. okay, so I've got to put f orange four six into one of those. Along, oh, along with five, that's an interesting point. I've not put five in this row, so the only place it can go is there. And that's helpful, believe it or not. Because now that cell must be the or the missing orange from the row, which we know is a four or a six, which means that cell is three or seven. It means that this cell's become four or six. Can we keep this going now? Go on. It's we've got, okay. That's now blue, which is really useful, because that therefore is blue three seven which completes the quota look of blues for this row. So that's now got to be orange because it can't be five. And that's orange as well for the same reason. And we need three sevens and two eights. And we don't know the order, apparently. Um, Okie dokie. And now, now what? <laughs> now, where's the easy win in this puzzle? 
this naughty naughty puzzle it is going to be there that can't be three seven so that must be the three seven um can we get rid of five from any of these positions fives in one of two places in box four what about fours and sixes they seem to be done ones and nines are done stop thinking about those twos and eights i know we're in one of those positions the blue two or eight that's not going to help is it i need something better threes and sevens no it's not that I still have got nothing. I mean, this is how this puzzle is being set. Its directionary has basically um, he's le left this till last. So he's established that with this sort of snake, you can basically tile the entire grid um, and then decided at the end that the most amusing and late filling cell is going to be this one to have the inequality that's going to fix the puzzle. I love it. Um, have I done both diagonals? I think I have actually. So it's not diagonals that we need to focus on. Have I done fours and sixes? They definitely, oh goodness, I don't know what, what, what that was showing me. I tried to double click fours and sixes and I got rather too much information. Let's try just focusing on orange for a moment. Um, orange is in one of those cells. Ah, where is orange four six in that box? Not there, not there. That's orange 4-6. That's probably been available for ages. Apologies if you're shouting at me about that. But it's not always easy to see everything. Oh, we're closing in. We've got an orange 4-6 on this. So does that mean... Well, we know this isn't blue. So it's either orange or 5. And it could still be 5. Oh, yeah, and that would work because that would force this to be six and therefore we'd know the nature of orange, it would be high. So we don't know what this is still. How ridiculous. Um, okay. Have I got all my orange four sixes now? Is that the upshot of this? I think it is. Yes, orange four sixes are done. And uh, in this column, we've not got this digit at the bottom. Ah, where does four and six go in this column? It's got to be at the top. So that's probably going to be helpful because now that's got to be a 2-8 blue because we haven't got one of those in this column. So 5 is definitely in one of those two cells now, which means that's no longer 5. That's become a 5. Let's make it purple. That's become a 5. That's huge because that's going to shunt the 4-6 down to here. Though the 4-6 is, what colour is that? That's going to have to be blue. So that therefore is orange and it's 2-8. And that means that's, oh, that's a five. Oh, I didn't expect that. Okay, that's the five. So it's actually double orange on the line. And that cell, that cell is a two or an eight. Right, and you can, you can let's, let's try and do the rest of the shading though, because that, or the, at least the coloring, because that's going to be more exciting. We might be able to double click it. Um, but we're nearly there now. This is three or seven. That's the missing digit. So that's blue and it's, four or six apparently so there we go we've shaded everything in we've got to the point where directionary got to in, in setting the puzzle but look down here if this was eight this inequality sign would be wrong so we now know the nature of orange orange is low so if we oh hang on can we double click this Oh, I can't. I thought I would be able to double click and just fill them in, but I can't. Oh, hang on. Look, also, we've got to make sure that those two digits are sorted out. But uh, right. So anyway, we now know that orange has to be low. So we know that thi this is a four is greater than a two. So we can fill in two there. And whenever, wherever we find an orange two eight, we can write a two into that cell. So let's find all of those and write two in. Now let's find all of the orange four sixes and write four into those. Boom, 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 boom. Let's find all the orange three sevens and write three into those. Try not to lose our army in the process. Are all the orange one nines? Let's try and find all those and put ones in. 
Now we might be able to do double clicking because before it was highlighting all the cells that had the same pencil mark in. So if we double click, yeah, if we double click all the ones, nines that are blue, we know they're all nine because they've got to be the high side. So now double, oh, hang on, I've got to go back to that. Double click all of those. They've got to be the high side. Double click all of the three sevens and make sure that they're the high side and double click all of the all of the two eights and make sure that those are eights and that is how to solve the puzzle <laughs> isn't that clever it's really smart stuff directionary take a bow that that wasn't easy though well i mean it probably is it's probably it's probably a lot easier actually if you do it if you do it the bifurcation way it make an assumption and, and then if this breaks at the end do 10 minus the 10 minus the digits Doing it my way felt trickier because I was having to keep track of things that like like this would should have been totally obvious. I think I got this to being a three seven and I, it took me a while to make these one nine and two eight. Whereas I think if I'd just written seven or three in here, I'd have instantly been able to write in the two options there. I would have seen it much more naturally. Um, so dealing with that sort of ambiguity in my brain sort of fractured it slightly but i love the puzzle and i hope you did too let me know in the comments how you got on please oh yes please like the video if you if you're still here now you probably did enjoy it a little bit enough for a like i hope so um and maybe subscribe if you're not subscribed we'd really appreciate it we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic